hello guys so today we talk about uh, what is fold and uh, elements of folds so uh, in this video we also talk about the type of folds but mainly we focus on uh, what is fold and uh, elements of folds so here the uh, definition or introduction so a fold is a wave like uh, geologic structures that is formed by uh, bending or folding of rock strata due to the compressional stress when rock deformed in such a way that it bends instead of breaking as called we it fold so folds come from pressure on rocks that occurs over very long periods of time it's uh, uh, standing on it for millions of years until the pressure is finally enough that change the shape of the fold so actually uh, fold is forms due to the uh, bending or uh, folding of the rock strata and uh, these rock strata is actually uh, folded in millions of years when these rock strata uh, stand at the same point or at the same bending points for millions of years that is forms folds so as you can see this is the fold and uh, you can see this is uh, the limb this is the one limb and this is the second limb so this type of fold is forms uh, for millions of years and uh, this folds are actually forms due to the compressional stress which is implied from both sides from this side also and from this side also so folds are uh, created in a rock when they experience compressional stress this is when the rock is being pushed inward from both side this is like if you put a spring between your hands and push them together as you can see in the picture when we uh, hold these springs like this way and uh, push this spring uh, in the opposite directions you are compressing the spring and rock can be compressed in the same way over long periods of time so this is the actually force which implied in, in any force in the uh, star rock strata and then rock strata is actually bending like this as you can see this is the compressional force or stress this is the one direction and this is the second direction when both direction is uh, employed in this rock strata the strata is actually bending or folded so see here this is the fold as i said in previous slide that when the uh, uh, compressional stress is employed from both side the folded uh, the rock structure is folded in this way so this is the uh, elements of folds actually as you can see this is the limb this is the uh, hinge line this is the axial plane and this is the hinge joint so here is the definition you can see this definition uh, by your own so limbs are actually the uh, side of fold an individual fold will have uh, two limbs whereas in a series of folds the central limbs is uh, common to any two adjacent fold hinge point is actually the point located at the maximum curvature uh, this is the maximum curvature so this is the hinge point and hinge line is actually line that joins the uh, hinge point hinge zone is actually the region uh, on the folded surface near hinge line axial plane uh, is uh, the imaginary uh, plane bisecting between the two limbs of a fold thus dividing the folds into two parts as asymmetrically uh, as possible uh, axial plane may be vertical inclined or even horizontal so axial plane is actually the uh, symmetrical points uh, you can say when you uh, break uh, this folds from the along the plane of axial plane that you can find two uh, mirror image of uh, to each other so this is the axial plane fold axis so uh, an uh, imaginary line in a space along which the fold is uh, generated it does not have a fixed position on the folded surface unlike the hinge so this is the fold axis as you can see uh, this is actually uh, an, an imaginary line we can say uh, along which the fold is generated uh, this is the one limb this is the second limb so uh, fold axis is actually don't have the uh, fixed position it can be vertical incline or, uh, uh, or horizontal axial surface so the surface containing the hinge lines from consecutive folded surface this is the axial surface uh, so this axial surface is actually the consecutive folders can join the lines are containing the line hinge lines 
from a consecutive folds so this is the uh, one fold and this is the another fold interlimb angles so the smaller angle made by the limbs of the fold is known as uh, the interlimb angles as you can see this is the limb one this is the limb second and uh, those two limbs are joined together at the point that is made the interlimb angles plunge of fold so when the fold axis is inclined angle which it makes with the horizontal as measures vertical pin is called the uh, angle of plunge or plunge of fold so this is the uh, actual uh, axis of folds and when it measures with the vertical plane uh, from this plane uh, and uh, what the angle is made between this that is known as the plunge of fold so this is the plunge of fold classification of folding so uh, folds are classified on the basis of uh, several uh, geometric factors uh, first is uh, tightness of folding so the tightness of folds can be described as uh, open tight or isoclinal so open fold is actually the uh, uh, fold where the uh, limbs are uh, dipping gently tight folds are uh, the folds where the uh, limbs is uh, dipping steeply while isoclinal fold is the uh, fold where the limbs of the fold is actually parallel so this is this uh, classification is actually based on the tightness of folding the second one is the orientation of axial plane so folds are also cl also cl classified uh, on the basis of uh, axial plane actually so the orientation of the axial plane uh, relative to the horizontal together with the orientation of fold limbs allow uh, subdivision into upright folds uh, overturn folds and recumbent folds so uh, so in upright folds the axial plane is vertical and uh, limbs are uh, symmetric while in overturn folds the axial plane is moderately uh, inclined and one limb is actually overturned in a recumbent folds the axial plane is near horizontal and one limb is inverted the third geometric uh, uh, criteria for classification of the fold is the thickness of folded beds so here the thick bed uh, rock and uh, brittle units uh, tend to form concentric folds with the bed thickness preserved normal to bedding surface so uh, thinly bedded clay rich units have a tendency to develop a foliation parallel to the axial plane and uh, form similar folds so this type of fold is actually uh, basis uh, cl uh, classified on the basis of uh, rock bed or rock strata so this can be thinly bedded clay rich uh, units or uh, some brittle rock which is uh, uh, folded due to the some due to the same compressional force or other forces so this is the three basic criteria for uh, classification of the folds so we will learn some uh, uh, common folds which occurs in the nature in this uh, video and uh, in the next video we uh, also talked about uh, this fold like uh, uh, open isoclinal type tight folds uh, upright overturned recumbent and all those things so the types of folds so there are different types of folds created by uh, compressional stress so the first one is anticline so uh, anticline is a fold that is convex uh, up and has its uh, oldest beds at its uh, core so this is the oldest bed the term is not to be confused with uh, antiform uh, because uh, antiform is actually purely descriptive term for any force that is uh, convex towards uh, upside so this is the anticline fold actually syncline so a syncline is a fold with uh, younger layers uh, closer to the center of the structures so synclines are typically uh, downward fold termed as a uh, informal uh, syncline also as you can see this is the uh, syncline so the younger rock is towards the core side so this is the younger rock and this is the older rock as you can see this is the inverted towards downside monocline so it is a local warping in horizontal strata rock beds are laying at two uh, two level uh, separated by steep uh, inclined limbs it is formed by vertical movement and generally found fault below monocline so as you can see this is the monoclinal fold so this is formed due to the local warping so this is the one rock strata and this is the second rock strata so uh, below the monocline fold uh, there is always found a fault actually so this may be the displacement of the rock strata which can you can see here 
Chevron folds. So Chevron folds are a folded uh, feature uh, characterized by uh, repeated well-behaved folded beds with uh, straight limbs and sharp hinges. So these fold uh, develop a repeated set of V-shaped uh, beds uh, and uh, interlimb uh, angles are actually 60 degree in this fold. So as you can see, this is the repeated uh, well-behaved uh, folded beds and these are the V-shaped bed, bed actually you can say this is the one this is the one this is the second and this is the third one so uh, chevron fold is actually uh, showing v-shaped uh, uh, structures and uh, the interlimb angle is actually uh, uh, 60 degree or uh, less than 60 degree you can see with very sharp uh, hinges recumbent folds so recumbent folds has um, essentially uh, horizontal axial plane uh, fold uh, axial plane uh, oriented at low angle uh, resulting in overturn strata in one limb of the fold so uh, recumbent fold is actually have uh, horizontal fold axis as you can see this is the fold axis and both limbs are uh, dipping in the same side as you can see isoclinal folds uh, are uh, similar to uh, symmetrical folds but uh, these folds both have the same angle and are uh, parallel to each other iso means the same symmetrical and uh, cline means angle so this uh, name is actually uh, uh, literally means uh, same angle so in isoclinal folds the folds are looking uh, symmetrically just like a symmetrical folds but uh, the angle between two folds is uh, same so that's why its name is uh, isoclinal folds as you can see see the angle this is and again this is plunge folds so a plunge folds uh, uh, is uh, have the inclined fold axis uh, uh, actually and uh, you can determine the direction of plunge by the direction in which the axis is inclined nose means uh, indicate the direction of the plunge and uh, in anticline plunge is uh, directed towards nose and in syncline it is directed away from nose so uh, we have already talked about the plunge fold so as you know the plunge folds have inclined fold axis and when we uh, measure when we uh, draw an angle with the horizontal plane between the original uh, fold axis and the horizontal plane that angle is known as plunge uh, angle and plunge fold is actually uh, have some uh, elements like direction of plunge and nose and all those things so you can read this in internet or you can refer any book for uh, detail so dome and uh, basins so dome is like uh, anticlines but instead of an arch the fold is in a dome shape like an uh, inverted ball in dome uh, a non-linear uh, strata dip away from center in all directions oldest uh, strata in center site so dome is actually uh, this is the plunge folds uh, uh, as i said so you can see the fold is, is actually inclined this is exposed in the surface you can see and this is the uh, fold axis which is actually inclined and this is the horizontal plane so this angle is actually plunging fold and this is the nose nose is actually always showing the direction of the uh, dip you can see here so dome is uh, uh, actually uh, looks like a ball and uh, all bits of uh, dome is actually dipping towards outsides and the oldest bed in towards the center and the uh, youngest bed is outer side basin are like uh, sink lines but instead of uh, sinking arch the fold is in uh, shape of ball sinking down into the ground basin is also uh, non-linear strata deep towards center in all directions youngest strata in center so uh, dome basin is actually opposite to a uh, dome uh, whereas the dome have uh, older strata in center the basin have uh, younger strata in center and uh, in dome uh, all the beds are uh, dipping outside while in basins the all the beds is uh, dipping towards center side tegmatic folds so these folds are uh, random and uh, disconnected this is a typical feature of sedimentary uh, slum foldings and uh, migmatites so tegmatic folds generally uh, represent uh, conditions where the folded material is of uh, much gray, uh, greater uh, viscosity than the surrounding medium so as you can see this is the tegmatic folds 
and this type of folding is a typical uh, feature of uh, sedimentary uh, slum folding and magmatites so this type of folding is also showing the much greater viscosity of material uh, compared to the surroundings so so this is all about the folds and uh, i understand that you have uh, learned something uh, from this video if you uh, uh, like this video uh, subscribe this channel and share in your friends group